Scientology TV just launched recently. And that Scientology is not just something you believe in, it's something you do. Well, I'm sure you would much rather just see for yourself. And that's what Scientology Network is all about. To show you inside Scientology. Who we are, what Scientology is, and what Scientology can do. Now, when you were in the Sea Org, Scientology TV was under development. Yes. Was there a big buzz or excitement about what would happen when Scientology TV launched? Yes. What, what was the sense? Well, it was basically saying that it's going to be all over uh, everywhere. And uh, there's going to be like documentaries and there's going to be people flooding into Scientology as a result. So that was the internal party yeah. line. Now, now, you're very much a realist. Yeah. Did you believe that? I personally didn't really think that this was going to happen. Yeah. And, and that's the case. Yeah. Have you watched Scientology TV? No. No. I'm David Miscavige, and this is the Scientology Network. You can watch it on YouTube, mm. and it seems to be pretty much a repeating infomercial. Mm. Same thing over and over, what, what would one expect. Did they do filming on the free winds when you were there? Yeah. Well, the way this was all supposed to work, that each organization, like each local church, would have a team that actually uh, does all the different footage and then it would be sent into a central location where it gets uh, edited and uh, what they said that before they can launch the channel there has to be enough uh, footage for six months ahead and this is why it wasn't being launched yet, that's what we were told. Now did you get in any Scientology TV uh Filming? Yes. Really? Yeah. So I could expect to see you on Scientology TV? Well, I don't think so because if somebody uh, is uh, expelled from the church, then uh, those people have to be taken out of the videos and uh, <laughs> pictures and everything. So they'll see you and they'll say, edit, you'll wind up on yeah. the cutting room floor as they exactly. say. Oh, your 15 minutes of fame and the Sea Org are gone forever. Yeah. Tis a pity. Um, I was watching Scientology television, and again, we were talking about this. They have a special on Bridge Publications here in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and they go on about state-of-the-art digital, all digital printing, and we can rush out jobs anywhere in the world. It's like a, a primer on a printing factory, which is dull. Okay? Yeah. But then they tell these stories about how Colonel Prado in Columbia needed this material from Bridge Publications in a week, and we rushed it out and were able to get it there. Like, so, I mean, FedEx exists. I could ship something to Columbia in less than a week. Yeah. I was unimpressed. Mm -hmm. They make it sound like getting something there fast is a big deal when you have, you know, DHL, FedEx, all ways to ship, right? Right. But you mentioned when Flag had a big need for uh, materials from British Publications that it took a long time. Yes, exactly. How long did it take? Well... Some of the materials, they never arrived. <laughs> Some of them, they took months. But on Scientology TV, they're bragging that they can turn it around like that. Yeah, the situation with that is that this whole uh, thing was made up for the little churches that don't have such a high volume of uh, demand of materials. And, and, flag, and, and flag has uh, too much demand and it just wasn't planned for that. Now, what kind of things does Flag need from Bridge Publications? Well, it's, well, basically, all these uh, materials that are needed for uh, Scientology counseling, they used to be done locally, and that all changed. All that stuff is now being done uh, centrally. So it made it worse, not better? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because it, when it was done locally, we could just do it, and then it was there. But then, uh, when they didn't do it locally anymore, uh, there was the whole computer system where you had to put in the request, and then you could track the order, and 
uh, it actually just added more complication to it and uh, the result became worse. So it made Scientology even more bureaucratic. Exactly. Now, how, how hard is it to, for you as a CERG member to work within Scientology's bureaucracy? It is uh, very difficult because everything has to be approved by several people. Even if you want to take a day off, the, uh, the request to get a day off has to go through like five, six, seven, eight people and they all have to approve it. To just get one day off. Yeah. So literally that's like having seven or eight bosses. Yeah. Now, were you often cross-ordered? Well, a cross-order is when you are supposed to do something and then uh, you get an order uh, that is uh, against what you're doing or basically something that shouldn't happen based on uh, the uh, policies that govern the church. So if, so if you were ordered to do a particular task, somebody else could come along and order you to do something else. Exactly. And then somebody else could come along on top of that and order you to do something else. Yeah, that was like an example where, where like I was printing uh, different things, but the, the things that I was printing only uh, supposed to be for internal usage. And uh, there was a long uh, kind of operating basis where certain promotional materials were also printed there and at one point I said I'm not going to print this because uh, the policy says that these kind of things shouldn't be printed by me but it should be printed where all the promotional materials uh, uh, were being printed and this became a whole fiery thing like the, the, the people involved who were very upset and uh, basically for years and years and years, I was cross-ordered to not do my job, but uh, do a printing that was supposed to be done by someone else. And it actually delayed all the things that I was supposed to do, because whenever I had to do that, those promotional printings, that has to be done right now. Because, so did, did because, you get in trouble? Uh, yeah, there was a time when I, I I got yelled at because of this, and but I I held my ground. Yeah, you still. But it but it wasn't really uh, like a, something smooth. Like it, it's not like uh, there is a certain way of how it's supposed to be done. Everybody agrees. I I have to actually fight it out so that they do it the way it's supposed to be done. So there's a great amount of stress working in the Sea Org. Yes. Is there a lot of yelling and screaming? Yes. There's a lot of yelling. And the, the people that yell most are the high executives, the captain. The people who become managers in the Sea Org tend to be those who can scream, dominate, yes. bully. Yes. Now, did you ever see any physical assaults? No, I, I, uh, it's... I never seen anything going to that extent, yeah. but uh, the mental assault is uh, just as bad. Well, certainly, yeah, yeah. When you have that kind of screaming at you constantly, yeah. uh, and and there's nothing you can do about it. No, no. Now, as a as a a foreign national working in America, did you have possession of your passport at all times? No, all passports are kept uh, centrally. Now that's illegal. You're. If you would, if what would have happened if you had asked for your passport? Uh, I ha I could only get it for uh, like specific things. Like let's say I wanted to open a bank account and I need my passport, and they I would have to request it, and after that I would have to return it. The reason why they do this because they are afraid of people uh, disappearing. So if you were allowed to keep your passport, you could leave. Yeah, exactly. You could blow or escape. Yeah. Peter, you were in the Sea Org for 20 years. Yes. Yeah, what is the last straw? What causes you to blow, to escape from the Sea Org? There, there was already a lot of problems with my, uh, with my seniors, like in terms of, uh, uh, you know, yelling at me and stuff like that. But, you know, somehow I, I survived that. But then there was a time when everybody on the ship got a day off. And my wife, like the, the part of the day off was uh, like a, uh, a nice dinner and a movie. And there was this specific day 
when we were supposed to go out to the movies and uh, one of the RTC terminals, like the, the, the RTC terminal on the ship actually called ethics and uh, told them that my wife was not supposed to go out to the outing because uh, I mean I don't have the exact numbers but uh, the week before she did uh, 37 hours of auditing and and this uh, that past week she only did like 36 and that is uh, down but per the policy that was operated on uh, if she did above 35 then she would be good so she basically cross-ordered this uh, uh, the, the policy and uh, so that was the last straw like we I remember I went down to the cabin and then she told me that she couldn't go and I was I was really upset and I I was gonna go also but I decided that I wasn't gonna go to the movies by myself either and uh, that's when we decided that that's it we're not doing this anymore we're gonna leave yeah and it's it's fascinating that these these things that are seemingly small are actually the culmination of 20 years of abuse yeah but then I also have to add that she was one of the top producing people on the entire ship